Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about the graph, aka GRT. So this has been a token that we have been addressing for quite some time uh, before we really kind of started to pump out back in the beginning of uh, February. We were actually holding this for quite some time and even accumulating this between the six cent range uh, to about 10 cents. And and um, this has been one of those tokens that I do think and I feel as though it is a very important part of the Web3 economy. But I also believe that this is one of those tokens that has been severely oversold. I mean, even at the current price today, it is 50% um less than where it was trading at before it did a monstrous push to almost three dollars back in 2021 it's also the same level that i was personally buying uh the graph at because this is basically where it came out at uh price wise um before this it wasn't really trading on most exchanges i think like the most that you could get this on um if you were trading on like a decentralized exchange like obviously it's going to be lower but by the time that it was on major exchanges it was already well above like 20 cents so this is one of those tokens that I'm watching closely right now um, as it does range around like anywhere between, I mean, if we go back to the seven day span, the average has been the lowest point around like almost the same level that we're at now, which is almost like 14 cents. It's been like 13 and a half cents to 14 cents. Now, is it going to go lower? I don't know, right? Um, in the short term, like if I want to do technical um, analysis on this, I would say like maybe, maybe we'll come back down to test like, you know, 12 some cents, like 12 and a half cents. Maybe we get a retest of like the 11 cent um, area because again, there's a, quite some time um, in this market that I've seen these altcoins possibly drop down to a significant demand zone before, you know, it fuels up for a major move. It could come back down under 10 cents. It's a possibility. Um, but I would just average in on the graph. Uh, to me personally, anything under 10 cents is a big buy. Like I said, we were averaging in anywhere between like six to 10 cents. And uh, we've been a big buyer of the graph for a while because of what I uh, see happening with the graph. Now also, if you do want to check out the holders uh, tab, we're sitting at about like 124.4k holders. Um, you could also check out uh, the holding addresses and who holds the most graph. Uh, if you actually look here, it's a proxy, then also the token lock and then Binance. Uh, most of the top holders of the graph only hold about like 1% or so, um, but for the most part, Again, like we've we've started to see this sort of decline in holders. There hasn't been a significant amount of individuals holding this uh, since going back to like February. We actually seen this drop by like over twenty thousand holders, which is crazy to me. Uh, which is most likely due to a lot of people selling off um, since we pumped back to like about twenty three cents. But nonetheless, let's talk about a few things and let's actually um, address a few things that are happening around the graph. So first off events community events so ethereum denver uh which was a huge community event uh centered on things happening around like this entire market um we've seen a lot of great names there <clears throat> in fact we talked about this with hedera um i do think that these events these community events are great for engagement they're great for community building and uh we do see the graph ecosystem is in full force at ethereum denver come by the graph booth to meet the community learn all about subgraphs and grab exclusive swag while you're you're at it and um again these events are great um community engagement so the graph um has a very large following almost 300,000 followers over on twitter um but they have a very high engagement rate on twitter as well um which is great again i always i always focus on this because community is crucial for the success of a lot of projects uh the graph has been one of those projects that have been around for a while like i said i remember this being our number one holding basically back in 2021 um before this significant price move um, and it was one of my biggest winners during that time. Um, and I do believe that it's going to repeat that. And I think that this is going to start to build out for a significant price move um, eventually. Um, it's going to happen within the next couple months, weeks, who knows, right? But this is just one of those assets that I feel confident uh, holding for a while because I do think, like I said, it's a significant tool for the Web3 economy. Now, let's also look at a few things that are happening on the graph and the expansion that has been happening since my last video. So 
we see that we hit over 700 subgraphs. In fact, we do see the graph now has over 700 subgraphs published to the decentralized network. It only took 60 days to go from 600 to 700 subgraphs. How long until 800? Congrats to all the dApps and protocols securing their data layer with decentralized infrastructure. And yeah, this is great. We're already at 726. Uh, so this is continuously expanding. Um, and if you guys did want to look at a lot of the subgraphs that are on here, I'm sure that you could probably find some of your favorite dApps that you utilize, or maybe it's a project that you are in. Like for an example, Sushi is here. Uh, we even see Uma here. We also see a few other ones as well, like SNX, uh, Synthetics. There's also so many other ones like Avi. Um, and if you scroll down, I mean, I'm telling you guys, like you could see everything on here, like polygons on here, uh, curve. There's so much data being pushed over the graph. These subgraphs are crucial. And honestly, as we do look at the graph, I do believe, like I said, it's a crucial aspect for the Web3 economy. Now, also outside of this, we've seen a huge announcement from the graph. Uh, they just reached another multi-chain milestone today. This went back to February 27th. And we do see that they added three new chains that are now available on the decentralized network, Arbitrum, Avalanche, and Celo. Uh, now devs building on these chains can decentralize their data layer and build unstoppable dApps. We do see Arbitrum is now available on the graph network. Devs building on Arbitrum can begin using subgraphs to rapidly load Arbitrum data securely and reliably while leveraging Arbitrum's low cost and speed. Which Arbitrum dApp are you excited to see utilize or start uh, using? the graph and uh, we do see down here from avalanche avalanche is now available on the graph network supercharge your avalanche dap with quick robust subgraph data secured by the decentralized network and then down here celo um, is now available on the graph network the mobile first carbon negative and evm compatible blockchain ecosystem is ready to be indexed and queried on the decentralized network and uh, these continue to expand um this is incredible listen this is what we want to see. We want to see rapid expansion. We want to see a multi-chain um, expansion as well in terms of decentralized data because guess what? At the end of the day, crypto is going to be a multi-chain um, infrastructure. I mean, like every single day that I look at this market and I see these, you know, interoperability layers being created and uh, interoperability becoming a big focus point. Um, I've always talked about a multi-chain future. A multi-chain future is where we are headed. We are basically there as well already. Um, but th like these things that the graph is doing, these you know decentralized data layers and connections, they're basically the infrastructure of the data economy within the Web3 economy. This is crucial. Decentralized data is a crucial aspect. I love to see this rapid expansion from the graph. And also... They're already connected to some of the biggest networks out there. For an example, we do see Ethereum, Genosis Chain, Celo, Avalanche, Arbitrum. We also see the hosted services down here from Near, Polygon, BNB, so many other ones. This is literally almost every single major network within crypto, and they are only going to continue to expand and expand and expand. I personally love to see this around the graph. They're absolutely killing it. I really like whenever I look at this again. I always look at the crucial layers to the future of crypto. Like if you believe in the future of Web3, if you believe in the future of crypto, then you should be looking at um, the projects that are specific tools that are creating an opportunity for crypto to be realized in, in terms of its power and the potential of it. So this is very exciting. Now, also... Uh, if you guys are aware of Coinbase's recent um, base, their new layer two, um, they basically announced this and we do see the graph collaborates with Coinbase for testnet launch of new layer two base. Uh, the graph makes public data easily accessible for developers with support for subgraphs on base, a new layer two incubated by Coinbase starting today with the release of base testnet. So um, they're already working with them on this. I think that this is great. They supported uh, the base testnet from day one. And uh, we do see we are so excited to see Coinbase taking a step towards decentralization with the launch of Base, built on open source technology in collaboration with Optimism. The graph is excited to be part of this launch as the decentralized indexing and query layer of their tech stack. The graph serves the needs of Base developers by making it easy to access public data and build performant decentralized applications front ends. 
Uh, we cannot wait to see the subgraphs that entrepreneurs and developers build on top of base. This is a further step towards decentralization and speaks volumes of the trend we will continue to see where centralized companies launch decentralized infrastructure powered by the graph. So yeah, this is great. And again, we're already seeing that rapid expansion um, of access to Web3 with the graph. Uh, this is what I was talking about with this. Like, for, First off, Coinbase has over 110 million plus users. So base is going to serve those users. And when we take a look at this, like we need developers that can rely on this and access that public data on base. So this is going to be possible by building subgraphs within the subgraph studio uh, with Coinbase. And also the graph with all of its rapid expansion within a multi-chain future, uh, I do believe that they are going to help all of this be realized in. I think that this is a huge area of opportunity, and I do believe that the amount of demand that the graph is going to boast through its uh, decentralized data layers, subgraphs, etc., um, is going to be a huge stepping stone for them. I also think that this is going to be very successful uh, for the token itself as well. Um, I think that everything that we do see on the graph is really showing us that First off, they are focused on the future of Web3 and the future of crypto, but also they're allowing things uh, to be interconnected. They're allowing data to be easily accessible. They're allowing things like these Web3 projects to truly see their potential because data is crucial. Every, sing every single time that I talk about you know, the future of this space, I always make sure that I'm adamant about things like data um, being easily accessible, but also not controlled. Decentralization is a crucial area of focus point. And I do think that it's a huge area for everyone also to focus on as well. Now, also with that in mind, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about the subgraphs because these continue to expand um, very similar to what we've seen over here with the subgraphs. Like you could see the index network, you could go through this all and see it. But I also want to show you guys a few of the um, main nets. So here are a few of the main nets that we do see. So you guys can see all of these. Um, these aren't really main nets, I shouldn't say, but these are like some of the significant projects that are being built out already on um, the graph. For example, here was another one that just recently launched. Uh, so this was Enzyme Finance. We do see Enzyme Finance has enabled delegation for their vault managers. Uh, what does this mean with this update? Enzyme offers its users an easy way to participate in the graph network while bolster, uh, bolstering its security. And that's what most of these are. Like all of these are significant use cases that are utilizing and leveraging the graph network. Um, and like a lot of this is like synthetics, tin like Uniswap, uh, Sablier, uh, USDC as well. Like these are some big projects out there, like even Decentraland, which I'm sure that you guys are all aware of Decentraland, but here's Enzyme. And you can click these, you could read all about it. You could see how all of this is working. Uh, you could see the code behind this and all that kind of stuff. Uh, very exciting. I think that this is great as well um, you can see like the logs everything around this everything that is happening uh, all the data everything is fully transparent love to see it. I, it, it honestly like again I know that a lot of this is very boring for most people like this is data this isn't like significant financial use cases but things like this data like data itself is allowing financial use cases to be um, possible like reach their full potential so I'm very excited for the graph I think that this is one of those projects that a lot of people just overlook because you know they don't really care about it uh, recently with the big spike is this because of AI was this because of the AI narrative who knows but I do believe that long term people are going to see the value behind the graph I think that you know it is a very significant use case uh, a lot of people have been telling me like there's better AI projects out there and I'm sure that there is but I'm not looking at the graph as an AI project. I'm looking at the graph as allowing these um, chains to reach potential to have their data, you know, be fully accessible um, in a decentralized manner. And I think that this is what we need. This is something that is crucial to the success of a lot of these dApps, a lot of these mainnets. And uh, again, it's a it's a project that I don't overlook. It's a project that I hold in my portfolio because I do believe in the future around us. If you guys did enjoy the video, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. Otherwise, I hope that you all have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are on this before, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.